Welcome to the K2 Sales Podcast. I'm your host, Karen Kelly. Every week, I'll be sitting down with a sales executive where they'll share their stories and experiences that produce game-changing results. Let's be honest, sales can be a tough game. I'm sure at some point, we've all delivered a less than stellar demo, been ghosted by a client or two, and sometimes, maybe we did more talking than listening. And that's where I can help. The stories and insights our guests share can be applied to your own business, your territory, or with your team, so you're not reinventing the wheel. Our weekly tactics and strategies help you get out of your head and start creating your own path towards game-changing results. Welcome back to the K2 Sales Podcast. I'm your host, Karen Kelly. Now, I want to begin by thanking everyone who continues to download the show, subscribe to it. We are reaching thousands of people, and it's so great to see the show grow because for me, it's uh, I'm always learning. Uh, our, our message is getting reached to other countries, their continents, and it's all because of you. So thank you so much. Uh, for those of you who haven't subscribed, can, I encourage you to do that because it allows us to bring you know, top LinkedIn voices on the podcast that really are doing game-changing uh, techniques, tools, books that allow us to elevate ourselves in the profession of sales. And just to name a few, you know, Anthony Iannarino, Todd Capone, um, a- Amy Franco, Amy Volas, uh, Jim Irving from, from Northern Ireland, like people like that. And it's all because of you. So thank you so much for downloading, for giving us love. And again, I encourage you to continue doing that so our reach can grow even more. Now, most, most weeks I interview sales leaders, business owners, um, people that are, are at the top of their game. And, and the whole reason is to share what they're doing that's driving game-changing results, whether it's with themselves, their team, or what they're seeing in the industry. And there's time to time that I come on and I share what I'm seeing. And I haven't done this in a while. And I really do love, these are smaller, shorter, bite-sized messages. But, you know, I pick up so much from what my guests share but I also pick up what's going on in my life in, in, with my clients, and, and I feel that it adds value as well. Because, you know, no matter how many podcasts we listen to, book, books we read, um, sessions we go to, there's still this knowing-doing gap. We're, we're getting the content. We're, we're retaining some of it. We're taking it in, but we're not really doing, it, doing anything with it. And so as much, you know, as the content as the material is good, there's, there's a mindset piece where we have to internalize it and we have to find meaning within ourselves before we push it out to our customers, to our team, to whomever our audience is. And so today I want to talk to you about, you know, just leading with head versus heart. And some of you might have heard this before, whether it's at, you know, sales meetings or or conversations with um, your team. And I'll tell you the three areas that it's come to my attention. And so when you look at signals or cues, or someone tapping you saying, hey, um, you might want to check in with yourself because you're too much in your head. And so the reason I'm sharing this is because, again, I am absolutely guilty of this as well. And so um, the first one is, you know, when I was in Sedona, I do an annual retreat to Sedona and I do a spiritual uh, session and I go on my own and I really get clarity. And so that was the first thing that they brought up is you are so in your head, you're doing And it's a reminder, we're human beings, not always human doings. And so that was brought to my attention that I need to get out of my head. The second one was I was um, at a a massage. She she actually does, she works at a neuroscience and she was picking up on energy. And she said, you are so in your head here. Like you are just, and she, she, what she felt and focused was with my kids. She's like, you're just like taskmaster saying, do this, do this, do this. And she's like, you know, you have to look at life as a journey as well. So at the end of the day, yes, you got all your list to do your to do list done, but are you connecting with your kids? Like, are you are, are you actually feeling anything? Or are you just going through the motions? And the third one was, and I always talk about the rule of three, and this is the third one that came to me today. Is we were at church, and the priest actually said this was his sermon today was about head and heart, and I just thought, Karen, if if there's no greater knocking on the door or signals, like this is it. And he said, you know, he he drew his comparison to a lot of the tech companies in Silicon Valley. And he was actually speaking with uh, with some of them. And they said that they're so heavy into the tech, into the design, that they've lost compassion. They've lost empathy. And they don't even allow their children or their grandchildren to go on technology. Because when you're in your head so much, 
And when you're focused on external um, drivers, you lose sight of what's important. And so I just felt really compelled to share this. And the reason it's always important, but the reason I feel now is if you think about where we're at, we're at Q4. You know, for most of us, whether we're a sales leader or we're a sales rep, we're trying to pull everything in before the end of the year. And this is where, if you think about our goal as sales professionals, you know, it's we're trying to build trust with people. We're trying to connect with them. That's the absolute first thing is just allow them to feel that, you know, there's someone on the other end here that actually cares about them, that, that's leaning in to understand about them, to hear about their challenges, their priorities, to see if they're in a position to help. And if you're in your head, <laughs> that's going to be very difficult to achieve. But think about it, the language you're using. You're very pushy. You're, 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 you're treating them like they're a number or a cell in an Excel, Excel box. And they feel that. So how can we really get out of our head and move into heart? And I think, you know, if I think about a theme for this podcast of how we can do that, it, it's all, you know, overarching is that awareness. Awareness is huge. And then, and then we'll talk about ways of becoming aware. And, you know, for me, I, I actually had signals. I had cues that came knocking on my door. But again, depending on how busy we are, how, um, how open we are to receive these messages, I could still have knocks and not even be aware. So the awareness is either going to be external. It could be a leader telling you. It could be uh, a colleague, a friend, a partner for me, a higher being, whatever. But something guiding you to say, you are so in your head. How can you move to heart? So, and, and if you're not getting an external, how can you just quiet the mind and tap in with yourself and say like, how, where am I operating from? And you'll get the answer pretty clear, but, and it doesn't have to be, I'm not promoting, you know, religion here. I'm just saying, if you can take a walk, if you can take a class, whether it's yoga, whether it's meditation, something to just quieten everything around you and allow yourself to focus inward. So I think that first step is really getting aware of when you're doing it, why you're doing it, and just being aware that in fact you are doing it. And again, the awareness can, can, can come in the form of external or internal. Okay. So uh, just be aware. The second one is being present. And this ties in a little bit with being aware, but you know, all we have and all we can control is in the moment, in the now. And so when we look back at past and we, you know, there might be um, times when we reflect on discussions we had, maybe we didn't handle ourselves in the best way with our team or our customers, but we can't control that anymore. So we have to let it go because we, we don't want that to influence or fuel ourselves moving forward. So how can we just, in this moment, how can we be more present and how can we lead with more heart? And when you think about lead with heart, it's just inviting yourself to feel, to, to authentically feel and, and, and allow your actions to come through love or through feeling versus this, I have to do this and this real taskmaster to-do list. Because whoever your audience is, they're going to feel that. If you're tasking your team to do things, you're just going through the motions, boom, 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 they're going to feel that. And they might do it, but begrudgingly. And if you're trying to do that with your customers, again, and you're, you're, they feel that and they're not going to do it because they also feel that you're no different than other salespeople. So it's just about being present in the moment, looking at what's within your control and really being mindful of leading with the heart. And part of that is igniting your heart and really saying like, what, if I'm going to lead with my heart, then what makes my heart happy? What fills my heart up? What fills me up? And a lot of us don't know what that is. A lot of us might be doing it for friends, for partners, for kids, but if we don't know what makes us happy, what lights us up, how can we be present and how can we convey that or transfer it to our audience? So if we're going to lead with the heart, know what fills your heart up. Know what excites you. Know what brings you passion, contentment, joy. Because all these things are related to the way in which you connect with others. And if you're struggling to connect with yourself, again, there's going to be a, an incongruence. And the third one is, you know, think about where we're at. We're coming up to, again, the end of the year, and a lot of people set their their um, New Year's resolutions, their goals, you know, around this time, or you know, New Year's resolution would be, you know, closer to the end of the year, even the end of the year. But I would say now, what can you, can you create a start, start stop, continue list now? 
And the reason now is because we have a good six weeks to start automating this, really creating these new neural pathways, these new habits that when the calendar changes and people are just starting it, we're well into it. We're in the automation. We've got solid habits that are that are allowing us to be present, that are allowing us to make choices that, that are intentional. And so that will benefit us, our customers, our team, those around us. But don't wait. So I would say create a list now. What are, you, what are you doing well that allows you to be present, that allows you to lead with the heart, that allows you to fill yourself up first? You know, at the end of the day, we can achieve these results. We can achieve or, or exceed quota. But the journey, it, do you not want an enjoyable journey? Or do you want to say, I got 110% of plan, but it sucked every moment of it. I, I was, I was under so much anxiety, so much stress. I didn't see my family or friends. Like you got to look at the big picture. Is that going to fill you up at the end of the day? And so how can you balance the journey? And so again, lo- look at what you're doing well, what, what's in line with ba- keeping balance in, in your journey. And what can you do if you're not doing those to start those? The next one is stop. What, what are you doing that you're aware because you've heightened your awareness and you're kind of reflecting on the last 10 months? What do you not want to do anymore? What is not serving you? And, and part of it might be I'm in my head too much. I'm a doer. And I'm not, I'm not doing things empathetically. I'm not compassionate, even with myself. Are you graceful with yourself? Or do you beat yourself up when you make a mistake? Okay, so really just, you know, what do I want to stop doing that doesn't serve me? And even if you can't think of anything, you know, reach out to some a safe network of people, you know, close friends, family and say, like, what, what do I do that you're picking up on or that annoys you that I may not be unaw- that I may not be aware of? And the, and the third one is continue. So what are you doing well that you're like, this is serving me good for me, pat myself on the back and, and continue doing that? Because a lot of people, New Year's resolutions or goal setting or creating new standards feel that everything has to be new. You know, before you even go into this exercise, there's a huge opportunity to reflect and say, hang on a minute, what am I doing well that I want to continue? It's not all bad. And, and I think celebrate that, that you've continued to do that. And, and, and there's a reason, you know, why you're doing it, because it's, it's, it's in line with who you are. And it's allowing your, you to show up authentically with your, you know, with to yourself and then ultimately with your audience. So, You know, in summary, if we want to get out of our head and more into our heart, we need to really look at the awareness piece. And and one last thing is, listen to the language we're using. I have to do this. I got to do this. And it's really, it's almost angry language. And how can you soften it? I get to do this. I get to go for a run. I get to take my kid to daycare. I get to go for a walk. I get to meet with my team. I'll be at Zoom, but I get to meet with them because I have a team. I don't have churn. I, and just flipping the language because that in itself moves from head to heart. And, it, and language is so important. And so just to summarize, again, moving from head to heart to really allow us to have authentic, meaningful, humanized conversations with our team, with our customers, it all starts within ourselves. Because if we are coming from a depleted void, unsure of what fills us up of joy a depletion of love that's what's that's what you're putting out there and that's why you're getting the per- poor conversion rates you're leading with numbers in and trying to get numbers and opportunities across line not people we're trying to help people solve problems do you think they're going to respond if you are leading from the, the head and just you know pumping out numbers and volume no they feel that so, you know, I think the desperation element is high now, and I think it's incumbent upon our sales and sales leaders, instead of hitting the more button, hit the how button and show them, and show them with empathy, with compassion, and you lead with the heart, and that will follow suit and, and translate and transfer to your team. So in quick summary, you know, what can you do? Heighten your awareness. Are you getting external cues that are reminders to you? Get out of your head and lead more with the heart. Move people. People remember always how you made them feel. The second one is, are you present? All we can control is the present. Are we allowing the past mistakes, decision choices influence the present? Are we thinking too much in the future? Okay, all we have is the now. 
And we're, when we're in the now, we're open. We're open to receiving message. So stay present. And the third area is look at a start, stop, continue list. Now, don't wait till the new year. Get in front of it. What do we want to start doing? What do we want to stop doing? And what do we want to continue doing that is going to allow us to be our best self and really get clear on what, it, what, is, me, what is meaningful to us? Because if we don't know what's meaningful, if we don't know how to get in our heart and stay in our heart, then we're, A, we're not going to do it, and then we can't repeat it. And we're, we're just doing such a disservice to those around us because we're, we're sounding and looking like everyone else. So by moving from head to heart, we, we become a pattern interrupt because what we're doing is we're creating an experience for our customer, our team, that's unlike anything else. We're actually humans showing up. And it's very trite and overplayed to say people buy from people they know, like, and trust. But it's true. And so if you don't know why you, what you like, if you can't trust yourself, and if you don't love yourself or you're not leading from the heart, how can you expect your, your audience to do the same? They won't. So what I would invite you to do is just, you know, take these three things. They're quick, they're quick hits. And let us know, you know, how it worked out. Is there one that stood out more to, from the other? Might be a great opportunity, sales leaders, to try this with your team. But again, model the behavior. What are you doing to, you know, show your vulnerability that you're willing to roll up your sleeves and do this too? And uh, would love to hear the results. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, stay tuned for what's coming up with the K2, uh, K2 Performance Consulting. We are launching our online subscription sales training for both sales leaders and sales reps in the next few weeks. It's called the K2 Sales Academy, and we will include uh, links in the show notes. So thanks for watching, everybody, and we'll see you next time.